uh, human rights that every human being uh, uh, must be able to enjoy. Uh, and this is what is clearly stated in WHO constitution since the moment of its establishment in 1948. But we also uh, understand that uh, for us to achieve the, uh, the expectations of WHO constitution and ultimately to, to have access to good health, we should also have access to the instruments of public health, which are medical products or medicines. Uh, do we really have a, 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 a access to medical products as it is expected by all uh, human beings? Unfortunately, uh, as of today, according to WHO estimations, about 2 billion people globally have either no access or very limited access to uh, most important essential medical products, which is kind of cutting them off of all existing uh, benefits of modern science and healthcare. And there are various reasons for such a situation, um, including, uh, of course, also something that is in the hands of regulators. And this is inadequate regulatory capacity or sometimes insufficient regulatory capacity but also lack of collaboration and work sharing between different countries when they are regulating medical products. And as you know, uh, also the regulation of medical products is a public activity. It is something that government put in place to protect the public. And so uh, it, it, is an, it is an activity where the government is accountable in front of the public. And so uh, there must be a trust in the system. Public as a recipient of these services should have real trust in the system. Um, and, and we also know that any type of medical products before it could be uh, uh, used in, in our countries uh, should be approved by a national or in some cases also by regional regulatory authority. And this is uh, perfectly in line with all uh, current international standards, but also according to uh, resolutions of the World Health Assembly, which is the highest uh, uh, governance body of, of, of World Health Organization. So in this context, strong regulatory capacity is really an essential component of a well-functioning healthcare system. We cannot imagine any uh, really uh, functional healthcare system which will not include as part of it a well-functioning regulatory authority or regulatory system. However, unfortunately, as of today, globally, more than 70% of uh, member states of WHO have regulatory system which is not able to perform even key regulatory functions. And only 56 out of 194 countries, which is less than 30%, have regulatory systems which are benchmarked by WHO at maturity level three or four. And so, of course, uh, WHO and our partners are concerned